Hey there, Thinker Studio. Uh, today we're going to do a video, not so much a repair video as such, but um, just a, a sort of a tear down, a quick tear down of this outboard, just so you can see all the different parts of an outboard and how they work together. Uh, this particular outboard is a pull start four stroke. Um, obviously, you can have two stroke motors and be different, um, electric start motors, etc. But I'll sort of talk through the differences a little bit where appropriate. So, this outboard, we may have been trouble getting it apart. Um, it's apparently seized, I've not even taken the, the cowling off yet. Uh, it was sort of dumped in my garden by somebody who was leaving the island and said, here, have this for parts, I'm going by. <laughs> so I sort of inherited it. Um, I noticed even the length of the fiberglass on it, so it's obviously had a pretty hard life, but as much as we can, we'll take it apart. We might snap a few bolts or whatever, I'm not that worried. Um, I am going to try and preserve as many of the parts as I can, because I do have a similar model outboard that's broken one, so that's a good thing. Um, but uh, the primary purpose of this is just to show you all the major sections. We won't be stripping the motor down to sort of valves and everything because you can see all of that in the um, uh, videos where I um, uh, recondition that to Yamaha 50. Uh, but we've got to go sort of just through the large cells and structure in our port. So uh, let's get going and see what we see. So I'll go through as much of the, the real basics. So people who are really familiar with outboards might find this a bit simple in places, but I'll just go through it. So the first thing I do is take off this cowling, which has a little uh, latch at the back. Some have that latches back in front, so it's just back. The cowling's just the cup that goes over it. It's usually got some sort of rubber that's invariably falling off if the outboard's getting a bit old, just to seal from water getting under there. In this case, on the top is the um, start mechanism. This looks like it's got some uh, tin. Uh, little bolt solid on, so I'll just go and grab some tools and we'll take this uh, ratchet mechanism off. So this particular one is held on by three, three bolts, which is actually pretty common for our boards. I think Yamaha has all three as well. So once these bolts are off, all that attaches this pull start mechanism um, is a cable that goes to the gear selector. Uh, and this is a sort of starting gear protection. It means that if the um, both so the motor's not in neutral, it'll um, stop you um, doing the pull cord. Um, if you sort of do the pull cord, I actually called it a, a ratchet mechanism before, and the reason I said that rather than sort of recoil mechanism um, is I was just thinking about there's a situation where when you pull on the uh, pull starter, um, if this start and gear protection is not um, adjusted properly, uh, you'll get like a kind of a clicking sort of ratchet sound. And that's just where the boat's in neutral, but the little pin that locks it and stops you pulling it is just sitting and it's knocking the tips of the teeth. So you can actually adjust this cable to stop that happening. Too far out, you won't get the protection too far in, and it'll make that sort of clicking noise as you pull it. So if you have that problem, that's what it is. So I'll just disconnect that cable and we'll take that part off. So I hadn't looked under the cowling at this, but it's actually a dual pull start and um, battery start, which is nice. Um, uh, should have known, seeing the battery leads going in like this. Wasn't really paying attention. Um, so what I will do ultimately with this motor is take the um, power head off. Now, I'll show you the various bits of the motor, but I'm not gonna take the motor apart per se because I've done that in other videos. This is more about the overall kind of structure of the outboard. But I do want to take the power head off the off the outboard so you can separate separate. Um, now to do this, we've got to detach anything that holds the um, the motor um, to the outboard, obviously. Uh, and the first thing I'll do is take these uh, battery leads out. So in this case, um, all this lower cowling is held on with uh, Allen keys, and this is a uh, four millimeter. So I'm just going to go around and take all these. Uh, uh, Allen keys out so we can get this lower cowling off, which will um, give me access to the bracket that's clamping the battery lead in place. So that's one side off. Now this side, so it just has a couple of overflows. Uh, the telltale, and uh, this is actually a fuel overflow of the carburetor's flood, so it flows overboard rather than filling the uh, cowling with fuel, which is so this is given access to this bracket holding the power cable down, but it's pretty corroded. Put a bit of uh, multi-purpose sort of oil on it and um, see if we can get that off. 
Um, in the meantime, while that soaks, I will uh, disconnect the, on the other side here. Definitely still got to put four swiveling wheels in this. Um, there's just a little bit of a hose clamp, which means we can disconnect this fuel line so the carburetor is no longer attached to the fuel port here. That's just another thing that's holding the um, power head to the leg. So that's off. Uh, and the other thing is just the um, gear selector. So this gear selector has got a just a little bit of a split on this side. I won't spin around, it's nothing uh, particularly exciting, it's going to be different than every outboard. As I was saying, the sort of purpose of this video is more of a large scale structure and showing you the specifics of this particular Honda. Next thing I take off is uh, the prop because I'm going to take the, the leg off first. So the leg of the outboard, um, well, the leg really is the whole lot. The foot of the outboard is um, the lower section here from about where these uh, diagonal cutters are, um, down, and it's essentially the prop shaft, the prop, and the gearbox. So first step is just to get this uh, bit of a cotter pin out, split pin. And let me just have a quick look. Looks about right. So this is a uh, pretty small um, nut on here, it's just a little 14mm nut. So I'll just put this camera down and we'll take that nut off and then we'll slide the prop off. So this is coming off pretty easily and this, um, this gearbox is actually seized. So if it wasn't, if it was spinning, you just pop a block of wood in here and then as you turn it, the block of wood will wedge against the uh, plate here um, and uh, stop the prop from spinning in let you get the nut off. So nut and a washer. And then the prop will just slide off. So I'll bring you over. And here you'll just see the uh, prop shaft, which has a bit of grease on it, which is good. Uh, and then behind there, You'll see a thrust washer. Uh, what have I got here? Pry bar, that'll do. And behind that thrust washer, you'll see there's um, oil seals just right in here. And they're what stops the gearbox oil leaking out and water getting in. So if you look behind your prop and you see fishing line in here, make sure you remove it because that fishing line will cut into those oil seals and cause a leak in the gearbox. And now we've got that off. I'm going to take this bolt here, Ooh, I I got that in frame, um, which is holding the foot onto the leg. It's one of uh, five in this case, one here, one I've already taken out, one here and two on the other side. So once the bolts are out, there's a little rod here that uh, selects gears. So I don't know if you can see, but there's a little lock nut and a collar. We need to lift that collar up so that the two halves of the rods are then separate and that's what will allow this foot to drop off. All outboards will have some sort of gear selector like this. Um, sometimes it's a pull push mechanism, sometimes it's a rotate. If it's a rotate, it'll probably have a splined end and just drop straight down. So this is a slightly trickier one to get undone. But they'll all have some mechanism about this point for separating the two halves. So I decided to spare you the horror of all that hammering, being a bit of a hack because this is just so corroded, it's not funny. Um, it's actually fiberglassed here where it had been broken previously. This gearbox is completely trash. It's actually under the power head I'm gonna keep from this. But in the spirit of showing you the bits, let's pretend, pretend it looks a little bit nicer. Um, and this will now drop out. Now what I'm gonna do is pivot the outboard out because the drive shaft goes all the way up into the power head and it's quite long. So I'll tilt this out and then we'll slide it from the other side. So this is the foot, uh, prop shaft scene. This is the water pump that cools the motor. Um, this is the uh, drive shaft from the outboard. So that from the power head, this spline slots into a female um, 
output shaft on the crankshaft to the outboard the motor and this is the gear selector that comes up and down. Um, as you can see, it's not surprised it's completely seized but you know you can see why it's a chuck out but hopefully it still gives you a sense of the, where the various parts go. So this um, uh, water pump here is got a woodruff key so the impeller is um, fixed to the shaft so as the shaft turns as the motor turns it turns the water pump so hopefully I can get these bolts out and I'll show you the inside of the water pump oh before I forget there's a tube coming down from the uh, water jackets on the outboard and as you slot the leg up that tube slots into here and this is the water sucked in from these grills and this is where it pumps up to the outboard so bolts are out now sorry if this video is not seeming highly enthusiastic this outboard's fought me the whole way as I guess you can imagine given its condition I should have done this on a brand new one um, so when you change your impeller on an outboard I've got a whole video on this um, but uh, this is what you're changing is this one here, this is the impeller, this rubber part. It slides up over the shaft as well, normally. All right, you have to take my word for it. Um, but you can see it rises up, it actually slides all the way off the top. Um, then you've got the base plate and a gasket under there where the water comes in. Um, so that's where your water pump is. So you've got your, your drive shaft, the water pump on the top here, gearbox inside here. I'll spin this round. On this side you'll see there's, well, a bit of corrosion that used to be a screw which is where the gearbox oil will be drained from. So this part from under the um, water impeller. So this shaft's got an oil seal, the gear selector's got an oil seal and the prop shaft's got an oil seal and they're what contain the oil inside this gearbox leg here. So that's the whole uh, foot of the outboard. Uh, also an anode goes here. So I think that's all worth seeing. This is where the exhaust comes down, where this uh, hoister is. Comes down and then comes out around here, around the outside of the prop. So while I'm down here, I'm actually also gonna try and take the, um, this uh, prop shaft out of this gearbox. Um, there's a little bearing housing inside there too. Uh, it's essentially two bolts. And then often you'll see there's a point here where you can get a screwdriver and try and pry it out, uh, use a puller off the prop shaft, use a slide hammer, whatever. Um, they're notoriously difficult to get out, and this outboard is really corroded, particularly the leg. The engine's actually in quite good condition, to be honest with you, but the leg's bad. So I'll give it a shot, um, but can't guarantee. This is actually hard to get out, even on some reasonably new outboard. So we'll give that a shot. If we can, great. If we can't, chances are you'll probably never see this video. So by some miracle, this actually came out, dragged a lot of uh, oyster shells with it. Um, I just used a slide hammer in the end. Um, what's actually even more amazing is there's oil in it. I was expecting it to just be full of water, but there you go. Um, now, I'll show you inside first how this works. Let's see if we can get some light in there. Um, hoping you can see that. So what you see at the back is, uh, is actually the forward gear. Um, and as the drive shaft turns, I'm sorry, not doing a good job of showing you this. Um, as the drive shaft turns, it's engaged with that forward gear and it rotates. Now, once this bearing housing is inside, got a bit of an o ring here, oil seal around here, it's what stops all this oil area, oil soaked area. Um, from leaking. Now this slides in this way and this is the reverse gear. Now this reverse gear is also permanently engaged with that sort of conical shaped gear that comes down from the drive shaft. So they're constantly spinning when the motor's turning. And this here is the dog clutch. This sits in between the forward and reverse gears and then as it sits and it sits in this way, this is the gear selector. And this gear selector either pushes this dog clutch in towards the reverse gear or has it come out. So that's actually engaged with forward. 
that's kind of neutral and that's engaged with the reverse. So this dog clutch is splined onto the prop shaft. So the dog clutch is attached to the shaft. These gears spin freely. So the motor can be turning, nothing's happening. Then as soon as this dog clutch is, in, is engaged, as soon as the gears turn, it also turns the shaft. So that's how it works, really simple. The dog clutch is simply these keys, three keys, that engage here. So sometimes if you see it slipping out of gear, as the dog clutch engages, it starts to round off these gears, and that's when you can find it popping out of gear. But that's pretty simple, and that's how a, uh, an outboard gearbox works. So the power head's held on by these bolts, eight bolts around the bottom here, uh, through this uh, midsection up into the engine. Uh, but I'm just going to take this little uh, exhaust outlet off. Already got all the, the bolts out, just to make it easier to get up to these two that are underneath it. See this just a little uh, cooling water exhaust out there. Some of the cooling water comes out the telltale, the bolt comes out with the rest of the exhaust through the prop. Um, but now this is off, we can get a bit of access to here. A long breaker bar and uh, this uh, impact socket because it's uh, um, a hex socket rather than a double hex at a 12 point. So it grips bolts a lot better. You're much less likely to round off a bolt with one of these um, hex sockets than you are with the 12 point. So I've got all these bolts out of the uh, power head now, except one, it's always delay. And the one that stuck's quite inaccessible. So I do want to salvage this power head. I was very uh, brutal with the uh, the foot of the outboard, but I actually want to save this, so I'm going to be a little more careful with this. So I'm just going to spend a bit of time trying to get that one out, and then we'll lift the power head off. All right, I'll admit it. I ended up just getting a plasma cutter and taking the head off that bolt. I'm not saying I'm proud of myself, but you know, me trust. So I'll just take you around and show you a few other things that came off. Uh, this was, uh, I think it's like an oil pressure um, warning light, so I disconnected that. Um, also got some wires here um, that were, I think, a prime start, like a choke mechanism as such, and the kill switch here, so they're the wires for those. Uh, the only last thing connected to the output itself at the moment is the uh, throttle cables. We'll disconnect that, and then we should be ready to lift this off. So I think we've got everything off now. It's just that carburetor throttle cable. All right, so I'll pop this down and um, we'll go through the rest of the leg and then we'll go through the power head itself. So next thing I'm going to do is um, separate this pivot, uh, this sort of, you know, steering mechanism from the bracket. That involves undoing two bolts here, dropping this bottom off, which allows us to slide the, um, slide the steering tube up. Um, and that'll have a couple of bushings on it. So if you've got really stiff steering and it's not your throttle, this is where your, your problem lies. Unfortunately, you can see how much we've taken apart to get to this. So if you deal with this problem, it's not a small job, unfortunately. It's a trivial thing to fix when you get to it. It's just really hard to get to. Um, so also I'd just like to say uh, g'day to Gabriel Mikau, I think his name is pronounced, um, who just left a comment. I said I would, so there you go. Um, but I'd also like to extend a thanks to all the people who sort of liked and commented, subscribed and things, because it really sort of gives you the motivation to keep going. Um, it's also a good point for me just to say is a few times I get comments um, and because the YouTube account's not linked to a Google Plus account, I actually can't reply. Um, so I'm not ignoring you. Um, you actually just don't get the reply option anymore. So if you are um, the sort of person who likes commenting on videos, just make sure you create a Google Plus account and link it. Otherwise, you can post comments still, but people can't reply to them ever. So I'm not, not ignoring those ones. I just physically can't do it. Um, also, occasionally, I have a bit of an uncoordinated moment and hit you know, hide instead of reply or something. So if ever you post something and you don't get a reply, just post it again. I'm not ignoring it. I've just missed it or something's gone wrong. So just thought I'd get that out of the way. All right, so let's take this apart and, um, and uh, 
I'll show you what's inside here. So once the two bolts from here are out, you can see one was keyed into here. So once they're out, this dropped off quite nicely. And now we're just going to see if we can push this part up. So I just noticed there's one more nut holding this on, which I think is stopping this coming up. I'm actually not sure what this is for, to be honest with you. I'm not really a Honda guy. Not that I've got anything against Honda, I just don't work on them very much. I tend to do more with Yamahas. So if anybody wants to tell me, please comment. So here you can see this is this sort of nylon bushing I was talking about. So when you um, when you put a grease gun on, you're actually putting the grease into here, and then you'll fill the space between the top and bottom bushings. But if this grease gets old and crusty, that's when your steering gets really, really hard to turn. So that um, upper bushing is still on the uh, steering tube there. And the lower one here is still in here. So these are the ones that can wear out, no ring there. But you can see how it's just behind this grease nipple. So when you're greasing it, the grease nipple actually enters level with the groove. So there's a, a groove in the center of there. And that's where the grease gets put in. And that's uh, what you need to get to if you're having trouble with a stiff steering tube. So here it is in all its glory. Uh, just put some glove on with oil. Um, so in no particular order, um, this is the dipstick. So this is the dipstick you'd check. This just goes down into the sump we saw in the leg. Uh, this is the oil strainer. So this hits down into the bottom of the um, of the uh, sump and um, just strains the oil being pulled up into the oil pump. Uh, the oil pump is here. It sits. Um, on the so pistons are running this way in this motor, crankshaft's going this way. Um, sits on the bottom of the camshaft, so it's driven by the camshaft. The um, the uh, um, the uh, oil pump in this. Sorry, I just got distracted when I noticed that's the uh, bolt I plasma cut the end of it off. So at least I can get to it now. Where it was, it was inaccessible. Now I can get just a pair of multi grips on it, or so I can get it out. This is the part I wanted to save, not the leg. Not that bolt for sure. Sorry, distracted myself then. Um, anyway, here I've uh, got a fuel pump. So if we look at the sort of logical sequence of it, it sits more that way up in the boat. Um, fuel comes in from that connector where you put your uh, fuel tank, fuel filter, through here into a fuel pump, from the fuel pump into the bowler carburetor. Uh, if you want to know more about carburetors, um, probably the best one to look at at the moment of mine anyway is um, the how to clean a carburetor video. It's in that case, disassemble it. This is the air box, which is um, not a filter, just stops a bit of induction noise. Um, obviously protects it a little bit from water getting in as well, if there's a leak in the cowling. So air in to the carburetor, fuel into the carburetor. Then this is the intake manifold. Valves are under here. This is the oil filler, so you fill it um, um, up into the uh, where the camshaft is and then it runs back down into the sump. Uh, this is a breather so it just sends some crankcase um, fumes back into the inbox to be sucked back in. Under here, let's see, I think this is just a grommet attachment. Okay. This one. So a few wires come out of the top here. There we go. So uh, this is um, the driven pulley that turns the camshaft, and this is the flywheel at the top of the crankshaft. So as the flywheel turns, as you turn the motor over, it then turns this uh, smaller pulley that turns the camshaft that opens and closes the valves as we go. This side uh, got our spark plugs going into this two-cylinder motor. 
Um, then we've got, uh, so there's a, C, there's a CDI ignition. Um, so you'll have, yeah, probably on the front here, yes, little CDI box that controls uh, when to fire the spark. Um, once again, there's a video on testing CDI ignition I do that's probably got um, uh, probably the best way to look at some details on that. Uh, starter motor here, uh, I think we talked about at the very beginning, is the little uh, relay that allows you to activate it. Uh, the ignition includes things like a little pulsar coil, so as the flywheel turns, you'll see there's little depressions and notches in the flywheel, and that gets picked up by this magnet via a sort of hall effect, um, which tells the CDI unit when to fire um, a spool, when to activate the coils to fire a spark through. And there's a single coil here. So this is the ignition coil going to these leads, then the ignition coil comes around to the CDI unit that's triggered by the uh, sensor here on the uh, on the flywheel. There'll also be a thermostat somewhere, probably under here, um, which restricts the flow of water from the pump that we saw earlier until the engine gets up to temperature. And here we've got a uh, um, a little prime start needle, which is sort of a, a enrichment mechanism. And this is probably some sort of temperature sensor, be my guess. So I think that's about it. I mean, I didn't want to go into anything in amazing detail. We'll definitely have more detail in other videos. Uh, next video I'm going to do, actually, which by request, is a fuel pump video. So I'll be doing a fuel pump video pretty soon as well. So we'll go through these different components in more detail. But hopefully that gives you a good sort of overview of all the basic parts of an outboard motor. So thanks for watching. Um, as you can see, I've made a quite well mess of the workshop now, but it might be worth it. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed this video. I um, hope you now understand a bit more about all the different parts of an outboard. As I said, we didn't do anything in huge detail, but it just gives you an idea of the overall structure and the bits that go inside an outboard. So once again, hope you enjoyed. Um, please subscribe and I'll catch you next time. See ya.